Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. Right, so very good evening to all of you. Uh, now let's talk about our Suzuki reaction which was a game changing reaction in organic chemistry okay it's a carbon carbon bond forming reaction and I'm telling you it was a game changing reaction in the field of organic chemistry and it was done by nobody, no, no one else than this guy and this guy is called Akira Suzuki he was a Japanese organic, chemistry, uh, organic chemist and he's still alive he's 87 years old as of today and uh, this guy did this reaction in 1979 for which he got the Nobel Prize in 2010 okay now why was it there why was there a need for modern coupling reactions coupling basically means carbon carbon bond forming reactions they are generally called the coupling reactions so earlier than this uh, earlier than the palladium catalyzed coupling reactions we used to use and sorry for this voice this is the NMR making sounds I cannot help it and uh, anyway so this is the Grignard reagent uh, and the Grignard reagent and organo copper reagents were used before this to form uh, you know carbon carbon bond forming reactions like uh, you, you must have heard of Gilman reagent Grignard reagent so these were used earlier to make carbon carbon bond forming reactions but the problem was they were very reactive okay they could not be used in water because they were very water sensitive so green chemistry principles could not be involved and these reactions were also not chemo selective they used to react with almost all kind of functional groups be it ketones aldehydes so these these were not um, you know chemo selective so when you are making natural products or when you are making complex molecules which have many many functional groups it becomes very difficult uh, to use these kind of reagents and thus there was a need to make more better more like better reagents okay so this is the reaction it was reported like I told you in 1979 and it's a palladium catalyzed reaction which utilizes organoboranes okay now what are organoboranes basically a carbon and a boron bond, bond whenever you see a carbon and boron bond in a molecule they are generally referred to as organoboranes okay and along with organoboranes you require a aryl halide aryl halide or a uh, vinyl halide okay um, generally allyl halides and um, al alkyl halides are also used okay nowadays with modern reactions but in general you, you mostly use aryl halides uh, like your um, you can say chlorobenzene okay allyl halides or bromobenzene something like this this is your aryl halide you use these kind of reagents then you use palladium okay palladium catalyst now palladium has to be in zero oxidation state to be active Alright, so the active form of palladium is palladium in zero oxidation state. Okay, and we require base also. We require a base, and you can see there's a carbon carbon bond that has been formed. This R dash group is our carbon, and this R is our another carbon. So these two chains have made a bond. Okay, so you can see the utility of this reaction. Now, the mechanism of this reaction is quite simple, and um, I'll help you out. So basically we have a palladium attached to a ligand L is basically a ligand which is in zero oxidation state okay then what we what happens is we we, we introduce a aryl halide where X is our halide and AR is the aryl group now oxidative addition means that the metal it gains plus two it gains um, oxidation state that is from plus zero oxidation state the palladium goes to plus two oxidation state and why is it called addition because it gets inserted between this aryl and halogen bond okay this palladium catalyst gets inserted between the aryl and halogen bond you can see over here in this step in this step the palladium is inserted between the aryl, aryl and the halogen okay so that's why this step is called oxidative addition in the transmetallation step what happens is um, i'll discuss this step in detail in the next slide uh, but over here what happens is you can see there's a r group of the boron okay so this R group of the boron and the X of the palladium they get in they get exchanged and this R group of the boron gets attached over here. You can see over here in this step the R group gets attached and the X group. So there's an exchange of the R group and the X group and that is called transmetallation. Okay. So the R group and the X group get exchanged and you can see now the boron has the X group. So earlier the boron had the R group. Now the boron has the X group. So this is your transmetallation step. Okay. Further, then reductive elimination takes place. What is reductive elimination? It's basically the opposite of oxidative addition from 
plus 2 state the metal goes back to its plus 0 oxidation state and earlier addition was taking place that is the palladium was getting inserted between the uh, aryl and hex x over here it gets removed between the aryl and r bond and finally we get our carbon carbon bond okay if i talk about the transmetallation step so over here if you see we have this palladium which is attached to some r group which mostly is our aryl group okay and x is the halogen now what happens let's say we are adding this as the base this is our base sodium tertiary butyl oxide okay so this this exists as obu minus this exists as obu minus okay now what does this, this base do this base attacks the palladium and the x group kicks off okay it kicks off the x group and instead of the x group now we get this intermediate okay now since the base is there in excess now again what happens is we have our organoborane and to organ this organoborane borane we add this base again now what happens is this OTBU group it gets attached to the boron and increases the nucleophilicity of this boron now this boron would like to get would like to remove this negative charge which it has attained so to remove this negative charge it will let go of this R1 it will let, let go of this R1 group once it lets let it lets go of this R1 group this R1 group attacks the palladium okay and it and this OTBU group leaves and the R1 group gets attached and we get this final okay and then the reductive elimination takes place and we get a bond formation between the R2 group and the R1 group so this is our oxidative addition step oh, sorry, sorry this is our transmetallation step in reductive elimination one thing that you need to know is and that the order of reductive elimination is if there are two aryl groups they will be it will undergo reductive elimination will undergo the fastest followed by aryl r group and then two r groups okay so this is the um, this is why is this happening why is reductive elimination favored for this because reductive elimination depends on the strength of carbon carbon bond if both the carbons are aryl aryl carbons they form a very strong bond and that's why it's favored okay so generally in the reactions in in your entrance exams you could be asked that which one of the following compounds will undergo fastest reductive elimination so it, you have to see the carbon carbon bond strength okay now what are the common organoborane reagents that we use the most common one is this boronic acid which is available commercially and this is the most commonly used organoborane there are several other organoboranes like organo trifluoroborate this one also is very very is quite common we now call boronic ester okay this is also organoborane compound and then we have 1,8 diamino naphthyl boronamide okay out of these the first one that is a boronic acid and the pinacol boronic ester are very very common okay right so um, let's talk about how do we synthesize organoboranes and i have got you a very good paper that is from chemcom that is in year 2013 um, so we have a terminal alkyne okay we have a terminal alkyne and you can see a hydroboration reaction is taking place to make our organoborane so in the reaction itself in the we are we are making we are forming our organoborane so we are using this boron reagent and using this boron reagent we are forming an organoborane you can see a carbon boron bond is formed over here this is a carbon boron bond and a hydroboration reaction takes place okay then what we are doing is sorry then what we are doing is we are adding our or um, this uh, halide okay we are adding the halide we are adding the palladium catalyst and uh, this is our palladium catalyst this is called tetrachris triphenylphosphine then we are adding sodium carbonate which acts as a base we are heating the reaction and the reaction is going on for 12 hours so what happens once the organoborane is generated you can see there is a carbon carbon cx bond over here and there is a carbon boron bond over here okay so these two bonds they form a carbon carbon bond so you can see i've shown over here this is a thiophene group this over here is a thiophene group so the thiophene and this um, double bond over here the carbon boron bond they form a bond like this a carbon carbon bond and we get this compound so you can see the utility of this reaction uh, in medicinal chemistry it has a lot of utility to form to form medicinal chemist chemistry compounds okay this is another important reaction and it is a very thought this reaction is a very you know it's, it's it's really good like it's very thoughtful reaction and what exactly is happening first of all it's, it's it was published in JOC that is Journal of Organic Chemistry in 2007 
and it's using a tandem carbon nitrogen and suzuki coupling tandem means both are happening simultaneously so first what happens is this nitrogen over here it attacks this carbon okay it attacks this carbon and the brom and it kicks off the bromine group so there it's a dibromo compound so one of the bromine gets kicked off and we get a five membered ring you can see one two then the third is a nitrogen three then the fourth one where it's attacking and the fifth carbon so you can see a five membered ring is formed with a boron attached okay so because only one brom one bromine group leaves not a boron sorry bromine groups so one bromine group is attached so we have an indole that is generated this scaffold is generated now what we are adding we are adding our organoborane which is basically a quinoline derivative this is a quinoline group we are adding our palladium catalyst we are adding base we are adding a solvent and we are heating at 100 degrees celsius and we are getting 86 percent yield but you see one thing extra is there we are adding s -phos. now what exactly is this s -phos? s -phos is nothing but this compound over here okay this compound is s -phos. now what exactly does s -phos do it's basically it increases the rate of the reaction okay it increases the rate of oxidative addition it's it's a it's, you can see it's a highly electron rich group and when it gets attached to the palladium uh, metal it increases the electron density on palladium basically it increases the rate of oxidative addition and it helps us to achieve the reaction in a faster rate so now what we got is a five membered ring with boron attached this is a five membered ring with a boron attached and uh, that is an indole species and then we have a quinoline uh, boron derivative so now a coupling reaction takes place and you can see there's a bond formed between these two okay so this is a very interesting reaction and now you can see uh, how you can you know think about reactions and two reactions you can you know two reactions can also take place simultaneously so these are some of the applications of suzuki coupling uh, and um, in general i have tried to explain you the whole mechanism and how you can use suzuki coupling to make many 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 compounds okay now um, i hope you found this video useful if you did uh, please like this video subscribe to my channel and also share it with your friends thank you so much for watching